Today we discuss all things photo walks on Behind the Shot. Hi once again, welcome to Behind the Shot. I'm Steve Brazel and this is the show where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots. As always, the show notes for today's show and all shows are available at the website behindtheshot.tv. As well, you can subscribe to this show in a number of different ways. If you're a podcast listener, you can subscribe to a podcast feed for the audio-only version. That's called Behind the Shot. And there is a video version, assuming that your podcatcher supports video. It's Behind the Shot video, so you can get that wherever you get your podcasts. Also, the video is on our YouTube channel. It's Behind the Shot on YouTube. And if you subscribe on YouTube, please make sure that you click that bell so that YouTube does notify you each and every time we release something new. Also, I want to remind you about the critique shows that I'm doing. I'm doing those with Don Komarechka of the Photo Geek Weekly podcast. And if you want to participate with us in that side of it, go over to Flickr and join the Behind the Shot group and then just start posting your photos. You can do that, have fun, participate in the discussions. If you want your photo to be eligible eligible to be chosen for the critique shows, two things have to be done. You have to A, submit it to the Behind the Shot group, and B, tag it with a Flickr tag, not a hashtag, but a Flickr tag, BTS critique, no spaces. That will enter it into the pool for critique. Don and I alternate picking photos, and we're having a lot of fun doing those shows. And that brings us up to today's guest. Now, for the introduction of today's guest, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. My guest today, Jefferson Graham, does a photo walks series on YouTube. We'll talk about that during the show. But he came up to my hometown to do a photo walk and asked me to go out and do it with him. So while we were sitting at this cool taco place having lunch, I thought, why don't I just do the introduction with you here? You've got all your gear set up. Let's check it out and try it. Now, of course, we're sitting in a restaurant. You're going to hear some background noise. That's okay. It's a lot of fun. It's about three minutes long. We'll do this video intro, and then I will be back in studio with Jefferson Graham. All right, we're down here in downtown Riverside at Tio's Tacos. It's a great taco place down here in my hometown because I'm on a photo walk with my friend Jefferson Graham. Jefferson, how are you? I am just great. So Who wouldn't be great at Tio Tacos? Yeah, I mean, it's such an iconic place. If you haven't been here before, if you're ever in Riverside, you definitely got to do it. But the reason I'm down here is because Jefferson does a podcast and YouTube channel having to do with photo walks all around the world. He's been to, so name some of the big places you've been. Japan, okay. Madrid, That's a big place. Seville, uh, Lisbon, Porto, as far as the international goes, and then a lot in the Southern California area from Riverside, Orange, Laguna Beach. You know. And your YouTube channel is it's Jefferson It's actually youtube.com slash Jefferson Graham. Okay, so if you go to Jefferson Graham on YouTube, check out all of his videos. And while we're doing this photo walk, I wanted to get him on behind the shot as well, because he's also, not only is he a, a journalist, but he's an accomplished photographer. So let's talk about your history a little bit before we get into the photography side. You're a journalist. How long have you been in journalism, as it were? Yeah, many decades. Many decades. Okay, long, older than we are. So, who do you write for? I write for USA Today. So you're the tech columnist. One of one of two. One of, one of two tech columnists for USA Today, but you also do photography. You do video. Uh, the type of photography that you normally do. What what do you? Call At USA that? Today or my photography? At your photography. Well, it's multi, multi, multifaceted. USA Today, it's journalism, and uh, it's the, the company and article. And uh, we do a lot of galleries as well. Okay. So, you know, typical journalism. Um, what about your personal work? My personal work, my personal work is street photography to accompany photo walks. Okay. My paid photography is portraits. I do bar mitzvahs and weddings and portraits and family photos and stuff like so that. So a little bit of everything, because you sent me one of the pictures that you have you know, of downtown L.A. that's this beautiful, you know, wide shot. And I, I love the type of photography that you do. Along with photography, you do video as well. Yes. Uh, so you're kind of multifaceted in that sense. And today we're going to look at one of your photos, most likely from the city of Riverside from our photo walk, but we may choose one or two. It's hard to say what we're going to do. If people want to find you, where can they find all of your Very work? easy. Google my name and you'll have a lot of options. JeffersonGram.net, blog.jeffersongram.com. YouTube channel, youtube.com slash jeffersongram. Look for me at jeffersongram, Instagram, Twitter, jefferson.gram on Facebook. Okay, so jefferson.gram on Facebook, but you got to follow him on Instagram on Twitter because 
I love what you're doing. You're also, you, you remind me of Rick Salmon and Scott Kelby. You are an accomplished guitarist, and Frank Dorhoff, for that matter. You're an accomplished guitarist, and if for nothing else, you need to tune into his Twitter channel, and you post him on, on Instagram and Facebook, yeah. too. He just periodically will just play a song and film it, and I absolutely love that. So on this show, we're going to dive into one of your shots. Let's go back into the studio, and we'll check out some of your work. And you'll have to run some B-roll of our little jam in an alley in Riverside, where you were nice enough to photograph me with my Telecaster. And one of the highlights nose. of my life. Yes. He bought a pig nose just for this, a pig nose amp, just for this photo walk. We took some shots in an alley. So this is behind the shot. I'm Steve Brazel. Let's get into the studio and dissect one of Jefferson's shots. And I've now just learned that it's Brazel and not Brazil. And welcome back. We're back in studio. Uh, I'm Steve Brazel. This is Behind the Shot. And today, again, I've got to welcome my guest, Jefferson Graham. How are you, sir? Uh, just thrilled to be here, Steve. I'm a huge fan. So thanks for inviting me. Well, I'm a huge fan of you too, and it's it, we, you know we just ran the the intro that you and I recorded while we were on your photo walk, and we were eating lunch at Tio's Taco uh, Tio's Tacos here in Riverside, and I realized as I was watching it back that there's one thing that we neglected to mention with all the other you know resume that you've got, which is somewhat extensive, is the way that you and I first met. You are also the host of a podcast yourself. Tell me a little bit about your podcast. My podcast is very different from yours. It's called Talking Tech, and uh, you dive in all the way. I'm a quick hit guy. I do a quick hit on tech news every day, seven days a week. And the podcast has run for four years, and um, uh, we got a new advertiser through 2020, so I guess I'll be doing it for a while. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So Talking Tech, it's a USA Today podcast. That's kind of how you and I first met was you were, at the time, was it the tune in studios that you were recording in? Yeah, when I start when I started the podcast we were doing a weekly round table uh, and then I would cut up the round table into little pieces which is very time consuming and so I don't do the round table anymore now I just do a daily talking into the microphone it, and I occasionally have guests. And then now you're doing your photo walk series which we talked about during the intro and we'll talk about more as we go through today. But that intro from Tio's Tacos was because you were kind enough to invite me as a guest on your photo walk series for YouTube. And just real quick, give me one more summary kind of, you know, helicopter view of what the photo walk series is about, because that's what I want to get into today is photo walks. Photo walks is a video series. I find it fascinating to go visiting, visiting cities and or great places and to try to document a photo essay of what it's like to be there. Now, then you have a photo essay and you have a video essay. And when you marry photos with videos, the photos look better and the video looks better. And I'm trying to give people a sense of what it's like to be out exploring the city, um, using our camera eye to take it all in, as opposed to driving in the car where we miss a lot of things. And, and you know, that's an interesting way to describe it, by the way, an essay. I kind of like that because the, the the video series, as I've watched the episodes, and I've watched not all of them, but probably 90% of them, the ones that I've watched, that's really what they are. It's a documentation, as it were, both in photography form, because you insert in the videos, you insert the stills that you take on the photo walks. Um, it's just a fascinating series. So I, I want to get into photo walks in general a little bit. Explain to me the, the, the concept of a photo walk. I mean, you're doing it differently in that you're recording video too, and you're producing this YouTube series. But for a normal photographer like me, somebody that's just going to go on a trip to, to Rome and they want to do a photo walk of Rome, explain the idea of a photo walk. The concept of a photo walk per Google is a bunch of people get together and go on a photo shoot. And you'll have more fun when a bunch of people get together and have a good time looking out for different things that everybody sees. For instance, we did a Riverside photo walk. You showed me some of the top spots of Riverside. We brought Scott with us, our, our mutual friend, Scott. Yeah, Scott Heath. And the three of us had an absolute ball. I'm, I'm speaking for myself, but the three of us seem to have had an absolute ball. We didn't want the day to end. I remember sitting in your kitchen for two hours afterwards right. because we had just had such a good time. Yeah. And that's what a photo walk's all about. Well, and, and 
the feeling was mutual. We had a blast. And yeah, we do need to send props out to Scott Heath because he was our cameraman and he carried gear and he did all kinds of stuff just for the love of doing it. And that's kind of how I see a photo walk. But but there's obviously there's intricacies in a photo walk, right? So when you're doing a photo walk, the term itself makes you think of going downtown somewhere and walking around all day. But in our case, we did walk around, but we had some short drives in between. So we went between the historic Citrus Park here in Riverside. We drove to Mount Rubido. We drove to downtown. In a photo walk, if you were going overseas and you were doing a vacation with your family, you could still do a photo walk the same way, right? Where you're, you, 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 you walk around for an extended period, but then go to spot B. Right. Yeah, you have, a, you have it mapped out. Now, I just did a photo walk of the city of Pasadena where I just did the parade route. That was pretty, pretty compact. You start on the top of Colorado from the bridge and you walk down to the Pasadena Playhouse. That's your photo walk, and that's great. But then I was also in, in Oahu this summer uh, in Hawaii. Well, there's no photo walk there. I mean, I'm driving from place to place to place, but it's the same sort of concept as you want to start it at, at point A and, and at point Z. And you, you sort of like map out the top photo spots. Basically, uh, you're looking for the, the postcard shots, which is a cliche, but there's a reason they're on the postcard because right. they're pretty incredible. And I think a lot of people have trouble saying, well, my pictures aren't as good as the postcards. What can I do? I hope that in the series, I show you some ideas on you know, when to go and where to stand that might help you get closer to that postcard image. Well, and, and as an example, your Pasadena one, you had a shot of the Colorado Bridge that is a really cool angle. It's not the same angle I see a lot of times of the Colorado Bridge. So sometimes getting to, getting to the postcard card, uh, shot, as it were, or location, but then walking around and finding your own unique angle which then brings us to the learning experience of a photo walk. So if, if somebody's trying to get better at their photography and they go on a photo walk, what do you see as the main benefits to a, you know, a younger learning photographer? I shouldn't say younger because you can be learning at 60, right? Uh, you know, somebody who's trying to improve their skill set. What are the benefits of, of applying a photo walk to that? You will always benefit from being around other people and seeing how they work. I watched you, and you'll be showing this, but I watched you shoot my portrait, and you came up with some ideas that I didn't think of. But I, I remember exactly what you did, and I will use them on another shoot. I did a paid photo job this weekend with another photographer, and I watched her work, and I picked up two very succinct tips from watching her work that Again, I had never thought of doing. Being around other people, uh, other photographers, just brings out the creativity and rubs off on everybody. And and you know what? I agree with that. Some of the best things I've learned about music photography was, uh, I don't know if you know Alan Hess or not, but Alan Hess is a hero of mine in the music photography world. And the first time I ever shot a festival with him, that's what I did. I kind of stood back and analyzed everything that he was doing. And in a way, it was almost like a photo walk. And you mentioned us taking photos. We went to a really cool alley with a really cool brick wall here in downtown Riverside. And I shot some shots of you. And then after that, we went and got your guitar and a pig nose amp that you brought for the day. And I love the guitar. You've got to go check this out. Uh, but I've got a small clip before we brought the guitar that I want to run. So this is us in the alley. In downtown Riverside, me photographing Jefferson in his rock pose. Okay, where am I going? Right in between these two here. Right here? Right in between those two. Right, okay. All right, so what's my rock star pose? Well, you probably tell me that later. But if I had the guitar, okay, so- Foot I'd on do, the wall. Doing one of those? Foot on the wall, we'll have the amp there. Mm. Let me get a tight one. I like that wall. Yeah? Yeah. Let's see. I've never looked so horrible in my life. You call yourself a photographer? I pretend. Uh, it looks really good. But I love it with all the posters. Yeah. The fake windows. I can't wait to bring out the Telecaster. Thank you, Scott. See, and we said thank you to Scott there in that clip as well. So again, that photo walk is going to be live on Jefferson's YouTube channel, which is Jefferson Graham on YouTube. And there's the pig nose Jefferson is holding up right now, which I got to say, I was, I was, I didn't expect it to have that distorted sound for something that small. Oh, I knew it was going to be distorted, but it's, it's cool. 
Oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And you'll see more of those clips because Jefferson show, I don't want to show too many here. That's kind of part one. What we're doing here is part two. So make sure you go check out the Riverside episode when it's live, which I think will be about the same time this show goes live on my my feed. Uh, go check out the Riverside photo walk with me and Jefferson because it was a lot of fun. So now I want to get into your photography. This is still so behind I, the I, shot. I want okay, to take a look behind a photo mm -hmm. and we chose this photo. You sent me a bunch of them and I didn't tell you at the time why I chose this image, but there is a distinct reason that I chose this photo we'll get into here in a second. So first of all, as I bring the image up, there is, we're up on a hill, we're up on Mount Rubido in Riverside, California. I'm going to try and for those of you listening on an audio only feed at about 50% of my listeners, viewers are audio only they see the shot up on the website at behindtheshot.tv. You can go see the shot there along with a gallery of, of Jefferson's work and all of his links. But if you are in audio right now, let me see if I can do this image justice because we're on Mount Rubido, which isn't super high. I should have looked up the elevation before I did this. There's this old tower, stone tower from way back in the day. That's like on the right rule of third. Out past that is the Inland Empire, Southern California Valley. Beyond those mountains are snow-capped mountains, which is part of the reason we live in Southern California. It's this beautiful mix of valleys and mountains and 10,000 foot bumps with snow on them. It's a beautiful blue sky and you captured the moon in this image, which is just beyond shocking to me. And here's the reason that I picked this shot. I was standing in the same spot as you. <laughs> I took the exact same shot as you. And in every shot, either I got the moon, but the shadows coming back were just not clean, trying to bring them back, or I got the valley, but the moon I couldn't recover because it was blown out. What body did you shoot this with? Sony A7 III. Okay. And according to the EXIF data, it was a 24 to 72.8 lens, manual mode, auto white right. balance. Yeah. And here was your exposure. And tell me if, you, if this doesn't sound right, but I looked at the EXIF data. 46 millimeters, <clears throat> ISO 400, two thousandth of a second at f4.5. Now, you've got an electronic viewfinder on that. Is that part of the reason you were able to find the sweet spot to hold all of this? Oh, I wish I was so smart. I was just play, playing with whatever I could do to, to, to get the moon like you were. And uh, uh, I suppose in a perfect world, I should have been shooting at F-16, uh, but I didn't. I shot at F-4.5, but just to cut to the chase, there was a little software, a lot of software enhancements went into that photo as well. Which, okay, which makes sense. But so that's an interesting point you said. I think in my head, I was focused on capturing the valley and making sure the buildings were sharp and the mountains were sharp and the tower was sharp. You were focused specifically on, I want that moon to be correct. Right. If I had to do it all over again, I would have, I would have shot at a thousandth of a second instead of two thousandth, and I would have had a lower, lower shutter, a lower f-stop. Okay. Yeah, that would that would make sense. Just normal reciprocal. Because I didn't but... need to shoot at two thousandth of a second. I did. I didn't need to. Sh I didn't. Need, I didn't need to shoot at a thousandth. I could have shot at two fiftieth. Yes. Right? That, yeah, that's true. But what was weird was this day was really deceiving. It felt really bright, but more than that, it was really hazy, right? This was, there wasn't even a lot of detail in to the human eye in this scene. And yet you caught this as though it's one of those beautiful Santa Ana wind, Southern California days where you can see for miles. You and I were both there. This was hazy. So when you, when you put it to your eye and you're just experimenting, and you're doing all of these photo walks and you land in places where you have these weird lighting conditions, lighting in front of you, lighting behind you, but you're trying to get at the time of day you end up there that shot. What is your overall approach to what you're framing and what you're shooting? Uh, well, well, it's a lot of experimentation and, and seeing what pleases the eye and you know, 95% of what I shoot doesn't end up in the photo walk as you know, I, I grew up 36 exposure, you'd be lucky if you got three good shots, right? And and now I'm shooting 2,000, and I'd be thrilled to have 100. Or, I mean, really, it should be 50. 
but you know, I'm just taking a lot and just keep shooting until you, and then when you look at it on the computer, see what pops at you. And then sometimes you'll start playing with an image too. When, when you put a gallery up, this one leaped at me because this is, this is, and you said it earlier, this is the postcard shot of Riverside from Mount Rubidoux looking at the valley. You got the postcard shot. What was interesting was your your choices in post, or not even in post, your compositional choices, which partially was in post. This is a cropped image, and I know that because it's not the ratio that would have come out of the camera. This is a, a even the normal crop before we crop it for the video it's feed cropped. Cropped. was about 16 by nine. The moon on the left rule of thirds, but high, balances the tower on the right rule of thirds, and by the way, the tree as well. The cross, here's one of the things, and I don't know if this was intentional or not. I kind of don't want to know, but I kind of do. If you had changed your angle of attack on this, the the top of that one mountain would have crossed the middle of the cross on top of the tower, but it doesn't. It crosses down below in the tower so that that cross is not intersected at all. That makes the shot stronger to me. Were you aware of of how high the tower was on the and mountain? I, again, experimentation, you know, uh, 30 different shots, maybe 50 different angles, this way, that way, this way. I generally, you know, shoot around until we find something that we like. And I, I discover that usually on the computer later. Well, I'll tell you, the composition on this, I absolutely dig. I, I grew up in this town and I looked at this shot and thought, that's my home. I mean, that that picture is the definition of my home, which is the highest compliment I could probably pay. When you get back and you're processing your images, what is your workflow? Okay. So computer into Lightroom and uh, saving on an external drive. And then once I have everything, then I do a quick collection of the current shoot and I start deleting out of the quick collection. So you delete images before you even do stars or anything? I don't do stars. I do delete out of quick collection because it's easier okay. to just get rid of things. Uh, sometimes I will uh, put a color, you know, like uh, flag it red or flag it yellow right. so I can find it. But yeah, this is this is what I do. And uh, I mean, everybody has their own workflow and this is this is the one that works for me. And uh, so what do you want me to tell about uh, working on this photo? Yeah, I'm curious when you, okay, so you you import them into Lightroom, you do your your culling and deleting. When you, how many passes do you do through on deleting? So one pass deleting and then do a second pass. And then I start working on the photos that jump at me. So in this case, crop, dehaze, which is your best friend, the dehaze slider in Lightroom, I uh, got rid of the haze that we were talking about, um, increased the blacks, increased the whites, and then I went into our favorite software, Nick Color Effects. Ah, love that. Uh, which used to be owned by Google and used to be free uh, and is now owned by, is it DxO? DxO. Do you remember? Yep, DxO. Okay. It, it's, it, it now costs $60, I believe, to buy it. it it's it's a, So the first thing I did in color effects was the uh, graduated neutral density filter. That's why you saw the moon. I, you just stick oh. it on top. Okay. Now Darn that it. to me is the greatest filter because how many times do we have skies that are too bright? And you're able to, put, so I'm not really altering the image. I'm just using the neutral density that we would have used anyway. Oh, at least okay. So let me interrupt yeah. you on that. Let me interrupt yeah. you on that. And first of all, let me second. Yes, 100%. Uh, even though it's from DxO now and it costs money, I believe the Nick Suite is one of the best inexpensive investments that you'll make in photography processing. It's a great suite of products. Yeah. So you go in and you do a graduated neutral density filter, which blends in with that you know, uneven mountaintop perfectly. Are you using, they have what they call U-points, to, to prevent it from affecting some areas. Do you use the U-points? How, how did you get oh, it? Oh, I use them all the time. Okay. I use them all the time, but I don't know that I used them on that photo because I don't know that I needed to because it was purely on the sky. Interesting. And okay, so what else would you I'll, have done in Nick? I'll add on top, uh, 
graduated, it, there's a graduated color filter. And I sometimes use that and make the opacity low to just add a little blue sky. Uh, oh. I remember. So um, it's a single, is that, is that a single color? Yeah. So it's, it's just adding blue or does it also add like yellow to the ground? Oh, you, you can add any color you want. And I've done, I did a picture of Newport beach that was just sort of bland and I just made it all red and against the palm trees. And that was great. Um, it, yeah, I use it all the time. I did an engagement shoot for a couple not that long ago, and it was all overcast, and they were all upset. And I said, "Don't worry." <laughs> so I gave them a blue sky. Interesting. Okay, so as you go back into this shot, you've done the graduated neutral density, you've done the graduated color, you did dehaze in Lightroom, which you're right. Now here's here's an interesting one. Let me ask you about dehaze for a second, because I find it, like at concerts where we have fog, right? They have haze machines that are pumping out haze so that you can see the beams of light. I love dehaze, but it's dangerous because it's the type of contrast that can also muddy up the blacks. Have you ever had that where the dehaze, well, you need enough dehaze to get rid of the haze, but it kind of kills your blacks? What do you do? Just fill shadow? Well, what I've had is it puts uh, borders on the top. And that's a problem, you know, uh, it just, it, it, it's a little weird up there, but I crop around it or I, I lower the, uh, the intensity, uh, you know, I, one of my most popular shots is of the LA skyline from Kenneth Hahn park or the Baldwin Hills scenic overlook. I was up there with my wife on a Sunday afternoon. You couldn't see a thing. It was so hazy. I came back, whoosh, did the dehaze. You'll say, wow. That was amazing. And it's a, sc it, it, it's a know, scary thing. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I used to spend hours in the dark room. I didn't have anything like that. You know, when we were doing paper and chemicals, didn't ever, nothing like the haze. Yeah. So on this image, aside from the color gradient and aside from the neutral density in Nick, did you do anything else in Nick? No, no. And then it goes back to Lightroom and then I tweak with the exposure and, and some of the blacks and whites again. To, to, to fine tune it. Do you ever, you stay mostly in the basic panel. Do you ever get into like curves or anything like that with your images? No. Okay. And what other, be, I'm, I'm fascinated by what you shoot because shooting on the streets like you do in different cities at different times of day is literally the nightmare scenario from a, from a lighting and photography point of view. Aside from dehaze, are there any other tricks that you have actually there was one you showed during your orange photo walk video which people should go look up and it was a selective color thing where you took out some color in the scene but left the color in the, either the brick wall or in the person standing in front of it what what's one of your favorite photography tips um well well first of all that's a photoshop trick that's that's pretty it's been around for a while and uh, it just sort of worked in orange um the long exposure iphone trick is so awesome. Did I? Sh I believe I showed it to you and Scott. Uh, when you shoot water, and uh, then you you're you're using live photos, and after you've taken the photo, you flick it up, and then it gives you a, a, a what would look like you shot on four seconds on a old old camera, right? With and live it's, photos, it's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. What's your favorite? So obviously, we you just mentioned Photoshop. We mentioned Nick. We mentioned Lightroom. If you were on a desert island and could only have one desktop application, what would it be? Lightroom. Lightroom. Okay. What Period. about mobile? Yeah. I know you're really big on some of the mobile apps. That mobile. Okay. Um, Photoshop, Lightroom for mobile, and 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 and, and Snapseed, which is owned by Google, but was invented by Nick. That. Little app is awesome. Uh, you know, I've got two pictures hanging at Manhattan Beach City Hall that were that were enhanced with uh, with that software. Um, they have an HDR tool that I love, and they have a drama tool. If you go take a picture with a lot of clouds, and then you make the clouds all dark, that really looks cool. I use and everything I've told you was just free. Yeah, isn't that wild? And, and yeah. Snapseed is still to this day, and it hasn't been updated in a long time, but still to this day is one of my favorite iOS 
mobile apps. When I'm on a job and they need, like I shoot the show and they don't need the pictures for two days, but they say to me, you know, if we could get a photo right away for social media, that would be great. Okay, no problem. I sit down on a bench, Wi-Fi from my camera to my phone, pull it up in Snapseed, edit it, export it and email it to him in two seconds. And I was shocked that when I interviewed Chris Rainier recently, who's a National Geographic photographer, one of his favorite apps to use, Snapseed. That's how good this mm -hmm. software is. So I want to go back to our photo walk because, and people really go, go look up Jefferson Graham on YouTube and watch some of the other photo walks. And we mentioned it in the intro, but I mean, we're talking from Hollywood to Tokyo to Dana Point to here in Riverside to Pasadena. They're, they're literally just a photo walk everywhere. If you want to know the good spots to shoot, uh, you know, Spain, uh, Portugal, if you want to know the good spots to shoot, Jefferson finds somebody in each area and he contacts them and says, hey, can you show me around your town? So you're getting actual photographers that are locals showing Jefferson and you and I at the same time the hot spots to photograph. So as we walked around Riverside, we went a couple of different places and you got a couple of different shots. And then you did the night after my show uh, that we recorded the, the, the photo walk with me. You also went back and you did the Festival of Lights at the Mission Inn. So you got two full days actually here in, in Riverside. Yeah. Tell me when you're out doing a photo walk, we found out like we went to the courthouse we did something uh, to get in. When you're on a photo walk, there are do's and there are don'ts. And I'm curious for you, especially like when you're in a foreign country or you're going into a courthouse or something, what are some of the things that you recommend people put themselves out there and do or that they should avoid? And while you're doing that, I'm going to show some pictures from our photo walk. So, so kind of give me an idea what some of your do's and don'ts are. Well, the first thing is that the tripod is this giant uh, uh, signal to people. No, 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 no. It scares them, even though it's really important to have a tripod, particularly when you shoot these videos uh, by yourself and you want to appear on camera. You kind of need to have a tripod. But So that's just something to, to deal with. But the big do is talk to people and ask them. Ask them nicely. We went to the courthouse. We assumed we couldn't shoot anything in there. No, Steve assumed. You were assumed. adamant that we <laughs> couldn't shoot anything. Steve assumed. Yeah. You were adamant that we couldn't shoot in there. And I said, what's the worst that could happen? Is they'll say no. We went in and they said, can we shoot? And they said, not on your cameras, but you can shoot all you want on your iPhones. Fine, thanks. Uh, I was at City Hall in Pasadena, beautiful, amazing, three-story building, and I asked someone, do you think we can go up to the second floor? And they said, absolutely not. They'll never let you in. I went in and asked, and they said, yeah, go ahead. But let me tell you, the second floor is better for photos than the third floor. Didn't know. So ask, ask nicely, and people will probably say yes. Um, I do a lot of uh, street photography. I, tr I, I sneak pictures of people. That's probably not a nice thing to do. You probably want to go ask them, but then you won't get your candidates. You'll never get a good candidate if, if you do that. So that, that's a line you have to walk. But just go out and have fun. Well, and, and the courthouse story to me is hilarious because, again, I don't do what you do, right? So we walk up to this historic courthouse in my hometown. And he's like, let's go inside and shoot. I'm like, no, you'll never get through. All courthouses have metal detectors now. We'll never get through. And he goes, well, let's go ask. And I walk up to the door and I see the metal detector is like three feet from the door. I'm like, no, there's no way we're going to get into this courthouse. He goes, well, but again, let's ask. So Jefferson walks up to the person in uniform that's armed and says, can we go in and take pictures? And she goes, no, but you, not with your cameras but you can go in with your phones and Scott Heath again to the rescue. <laughs> we loaded him with every camera strap, every bag that we had. He waited outside. Jefferson and I go into the courthouse and we're going around and we're shooting the ceilings. It's it's you got to admit it's a beautiful building inside and we're shooting the stained glass windows. And Jefferson says to me, I wonder if we can go into one of the courtrooms. And again, Steve being the, the hum, bah humbug guy, no, 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 no. You can't take pictures in a courtroom. They're going to get mad at you and they have guns. But instead, he goes, well, you know, we could find one open. And I see a security guy 
And I think, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm learning while I'm here. I'm going to go ask. And I walk up to the security guy, which was actually a sheriff, again, armed, said, is there any way we could get into a courtroom to take pictures? And he goes, no, 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 no. You can't do that. Um, you know, all the courtrooms are in use, but you know, if you were to go just peek your head into unit number one. <laughs> and so we go open the door to courtroom number one. And of course there were people in there doing a presentation and there was a judge on the bench, but it felt really good just to go ask. And I would have never done that until we did this walk. Well, now, you know, <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and the other assumption is just assume you're going to be kicked out of places. And um, where was I? Uh, uh, oh, I was at the post. I was at the library in, in Pasadena, and I just started taking pictures until somebody came by, and I said, "No pictures." He said, "No, you can take pictures. Just don't have any people in them." I said, okay, that's fine. That's Which fine. is yeah, okay. I I totally get that. I'm curious. For people who have never done a photo walk, and I've done them before, and of course, you know, Scott Kelby has his big Scott Kelby photo walk every year. If you've never done a photo walk, that's a good time to start because there's a lot of photographers that will be out there to help you and help you understand the, the ropes that you're going through. What are your top three photo walk tips? Let me just say that on the Scott Kelby one, I did one of those photo walks and I met, had met all new people that found out about the photo walk on his website. They all came to Manhattan Beach. I set the call time for 6 a.m., I believe. No, I'm sorry. It was 7 a.m. You were the host? Set, I called this. I was the host of it. Yeah. I called for 7 a.m. I had a full house. I, I think 15 people. They all had a great time and they all would come every week if we did it or every month or whatever. They would just went down the website and they looked, oh, oh, Manhattan Beach, that sounds good. People really like going out and taking pictures together. So my, my, my dues are bring, have your camera charged. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if you bring an iPhone, doesn't matter if you bring an SLR, just bring your camera eye and know that you're walking and you're not driving by somewhere and you're gonna see some stuff that you never noticed before, whether you saw it or somebody else saw it uh, together. Um, you know, it, it was more fun hiking the mountain with, with you, and, you and Scott than me just hiking up by myself. I can guarantee you that. And the three of us together, we're, oh, look over there, look over there, look over there. It's just um, infectious. Well, and here's another thing. The, the mountain's an interesting thing to bring into this because I was born and raised here. I've tried moving away multiple times. I keep coming back. And I know this town. I know this town really, really well. And yet in trying to find places to take you for the photo walk, and then in going to some of those places like the Citrus Park, I learned things. Or we went to the, the parent California Naval Orange, which is, you know, in a cage now to perfect, pr uh, protect it from disease. But I learned so much about my own town by doing a photo walk in my own town. You even at one point pulled out your drone, which was really awesome. And that was another eye opener for me is some of your shots of the, the orange groves where you're up above and you get the the geometry of the lines of the orange groves, I've got it up actually right now, uh, of the orange groves and the shadows of the trees. And you see actually that when you're on the ground, they feel really close, but when you're in the air, they create this really cool repeating pattern. Uh, it was just really cool to me. You did one thing that was interesting. I tried to contact some contacts I know, pull some strings. And when I mentioned that to you, I found out you had also reached out to some city officials to try and just check on some access to things. Everywhere you go, usually you try and make it to where anybody can get there, depending on time of day or whatever. But do you recommend right, that right, people right. going to a, a city they're not familiar with do reach out to, to somebody or some entity in that city? Well, the, each city has a visit little section that that's what they're paid to do. And they, they're paid to retweet you and, and uh, repost your Instagram. So I definitely would reach out to them. As we know, uh, the city person in Riverside didn't write back to me. Uh, well, he sort of did, but then he didn't. Uh, but that's okay because I had you. Uh, you know, you just like, 
you look for any opportunity you can have. But I will say that in my videos, I do not take people to very special places that only I had access to. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to bring you to places that, that are open to everybody. Which, which makes sense very, very definitely. And of course, we had that great lunch at Tio's Tacos, which we're going to go back to for the outro of this show. We'll head back and, and do the whole close of this show uh, that we recorded when we were at Tio's Tacos. So if people want to actually, let me ask you one question really quick. If you were to recommend a photographer that people may not know about that they should follow, or they may know about him and not be following, who's the photographer you would recommend that people follow and can can get good content from? Well, I'll mention a bunch. Um, first of all, our mutual friend Rick Salmon does, and he never ceases to amaze me how great he is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, um, whether it's the Oregon coast, whether it's um, Costa Rica, where he just was, um, he's pretty amazing. Christopher Antarctica. Michael is, a, uh, yeah, Chris Michael is an amazing photographer. His penguin shots are out of this world. He has all the money in the world, and he's devoted his life to just traveling everywhere and taking amazing photos. So I love him. Uh, I love Scott Kelby's work, uh, who is the dean of Photoshop and and pho Photoshop education. Uh, David Hobby is great, and Good um, choice. somebody that may not be familiar to your audience is na named Josh Josh McNair, uh, who has a, a, a travel website called California Through My Lens. Uh, he's I did the Mission Lights uh, video with him. He's a really good photographer, really good. Yeah, he's also I I have not met him, and I need to because he's from my area. I should do a photo walk with him. Uh, but he took you to the the historic Mission Inn and did the Festival of Lights, which is this right. insane lighting you know, display. Um, so Jefferson, I have to say, I so much enjoyed that photo walk with you. I was just going to say, I learned a lot from Josh when we went on that, on that photo shoot together, things that I hadn't even thought of because you never know. It, see, and that's the thing. Uh, I, I learned so much walking around my own city and I thank you greatly for that. I had an absolute blast and I hope you and I do it again sometime with Scott because he's part of the, part of the clan as it were. Uh, but thank you so very much. If people want to find you and I've been putting, if you're watching the video version of this coming up underneath Jefferson on a regular basis or lower thirds, giving you his website, his talking tech podcast, his social media handles. But if you just want to pass on your website really quick so people can find you. Okay. I'm the easiest person in the world. Jeffersongram.net, jeffersongram.com. Got that? YouTube at Jefferson Graham. Twitter and Instagram at Jefferson Graham. Facebook is Je Jefferson.gram. Okay. And, and I think we're going to cover. All, I, go ahead. I, and, and write me, Jefferson Graham at Gmail. Huh, there you go. And watch for him in USA Today and also the Talking Tech podcast for USA Today. We're going to touch on all of those again in the close that we're about to do. But again, to Jefferson Graham, thank you so, so much for being on Behind the Shot. Thank you as well from my heart for having me on your uh, photo walks show on YouTube, Jefferson Graham on YouTube. To everybody that's watching, just a reminder, if you wanna participate in the uh, Flickr uh, group that we're doing for Behind the Shot, head on over to Flickr, join the Behind the Shot group and submit your pictures. We're having fun over there. If you also not only submit them to the group, but tag them with the Flickr tag, BTS Critique, no space, BTS Critique. Don Komorechka of the Photo Geek Weekly podcast and I are doing critique shows, and that's how we get the images for the critique shows. And that wraps it up for this time. But to close the show, I want to head back to the photo walk that I did with Jefferson Graham. We were at lunch, Tio's Tacos in Riverside. Let's head to that video to close it out. All right, so that does it for another episode of Behind the Shot. I'm Steve Brazel. Thank you very much to my guest this time around, Jefferson Graham. Thanks for having me. You can yes. check him out on USA Today. He's one of two tech columnists there. Jefferson Graham on pretty much all social media. In fact, the easiest thing, just Google Jefferson Graham. You'll find a ton of answers. And during the video portion of this, where we did talk about one of Jefferson's shots, I'll make sure that I have lower thirds there. And also, you can go to the blog post. It's at BehindTheShot.tv. I'll have links to all of Jefferson's work there. Uh, anything you want to let people know about what you got coming up? Uh, we don't. Who knows? Just uh, you're gonna. Who, where are we going next on the next photo walk? You'll have to tune in and find out. I have a, 
I don't know. I haven't started plotting it out yet. It's the mystery of life. Speaking of photo walks, one thing I do want to let you know, make sure that you go look at the photo walk that I did with Jefferson. It's up at his YouTube channel, Jefferson Graham on YouTube. Go check that one out, too, because we had a blast walking around downtown Riverside, California, and exploring with the photo walk. Check out all the photo walk shows. Again, this is Behind the Shot. I'm Steve Brazel. We'll see you on the next show. Thank you.